Hi everyone. Welcome to Leslie Ray's Crafty Gig. My name is Leslie Ray and this is my Crafty Gig. Tonight, um, I decided I wanted to do some upcycled projects. And um, as you know, upcycled is taking something old and recycling it and making it something new again. And I don't know about those of you with kids, but we get very overwhelmed with clothes that we run out of uh, or wear out. Um, you get, you know, moving along and your kids get growing and they change sizes and all of a sudden you've got this big old pile of shirts or a big old pile of jeans and um, it's just overwhelming. And some people are very strange about hand-me-downs. My kids are not. My kids love hand-me-downs. We love hand-me-downs all the time. But, um, you know, you you have you, you have to find other uses for hand-me-downs. Because anymore, I know here in town, a lot of our places um, that have second-hand clothing and stuff, they won't take, like, old t-shirts. And they won't take old blue jeans. And so you find stuff that you want to create with them. Oh, and so, for my pictures? No. and so one of the things um, that I did with my son a couple of years ago was during his um, sewing camp, we made these bags. And I took a picture and I posted it on Facebook, but you can see it's got handles here and it has, you know, a good space in here that you can put stuff in. And the bottom is sewn together like a bag would be like a grocery sack. And if you don't have grocery sacks handy, um, you can you can just wing it. I'll put a simple pattern on my blog for you so you can see how to do it. But we're going to cut one of these and make one. The nice thing about this actual bag is you could you can do it with any size shirt this is one of Will's shirts this is one of his favorite shirts he loves to wear with basketball on it and he uses this bag a lot if he's going to um, going to Grammys and he just has like some quickie things he wants to grab he'll grab this um, and put it in there and so I he has that in one of his places of honor in his room so he doesn't lose it. Um, I have a lot of shirts, a lot of t-shirts. Many of them are about this size actually. And they have on them um, different logos of things he liked. His trucks, his um, frogs, whatever. Funny things that he liked. And I've kept those. Those are not the shirt I want to do this on. Um, I want to do it on this shirt because this will be a fun one to make a little bag with this. But um, those I'm keeping to make a, either make a pillow or a quilt with. So I'll take a bunch of those and cut them into squares and then make him a, a little quilt with them. Make him a t-shirt quilt so it'll be nice and soft. Because now you can even get flat sheets that are t-shirt material. So if you wanted to back it with a simple nice t-shirt you could and it would work really well. Um, so what we're going to do to this one is what you would do to all of them, okay? Regardless of size, these are the same cuts you're going to make across the board. So start with a t-shirt. This is a t-shirt that um, we made this t-shirt at um, one of Will's best friend's birthday parties. And, and so we made this with That's Will. That one's mine. No, this was Will's. And then Will wore it out, and we saved it, and Sam wore it. And um, you can see it, it's it's getting kind of holy. Holy, holy, it, it's, holy. It's getting used. And but it's holy, holy, woolly, woolly. It is holy, holy, woolly, woolly. So the first thing you need to do is figure out your sleeves. And what I do is I pull up here all the way so that this is going flat down. And I have this other seam up here at the shoulder again going flat. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Now I'm going to use a Sharpie so that you can see it. Um, but when you're doing it yourself, I recommend chalk. Probably won't use a yellow Sharpie because then you won't see it. Oops, I have chalk. You have chalk? Yeah. Give me a piece of chalk then. Let's see if they can see the chalk. We'll try chalk and see if you can see it. So. I have some really old scrapbook shirts. I'm thinking about doing this too, too. So I can have like a bag to stick some stuff in. Well, I thought she, okay, here we go. So we have a big, a big piece of chalk. And what you want to do around the arm sleeves is come in a couple of inches below, or an inch in this case, because it's a little bit smaller. So you see right there. And you want to have it curve in. And I'm cutting about probably an inch, an inch from this seam right here. Because here's the seam, and here's Mama where this is. Sam, sit down. I have to make me one. I will make you one if you will be quiet, my dear. And you can cut this with either your pinking shears or your straights. I'm just using some straight scissors. And before I do this side, I'm going to cut this one, okay? Alright, don't throw this away. I'm going to show you what you can do with it. Okay, so we've got one cut already. Now, the easiest way to make sure your stuff matches is to take it. I'm lining it up up here at the collar so that the edge of the collars go together. Right there. And I'm lining it up on the sides right here. Okay. And there is that same curve right there. And so I'm just going to mark it. And cut. Okay, so another another sleeve off. All right, now you're down to kind of what looks like a an undershirt, right? But you want it to look like your bag, your grocery bag. Miss the tip. What I did, Molly, is after I cut this one, I lined them up over here, and that's how I figured out what I was going to cut here to make it you know, line up the same curve. Okay. And so next we're going to cut the inside of the bag. Now, if you look at a regular bag, okay, your inside, here's our, here's our outside, your inside almost comes down to where the arms are. See? Almost. Not quite. Almost. And then it has this funny little lip up right there. And by making that, it curls really nicely so that this stays flat. Uh -huh. Okay? So I'm going to show you that. So the center of this... She cut it. Is going to be, where is my straight edge? Here, we'll use this. This will work. Okay, because what I need is to see where I want my dip to be. It's really easy and I want, to make. I'm going to make my dip go up just a smidge, okay? 
Now, I'm not going to make it go as far down as here because this is smaller. If this is a bigger shirt, I might would make it go down as far. But this is a smaller bag. And so this is going to be across here about where we're going to need to have it go down to. Okay. And then to make my dip that's going to go up, I'm going to use just a simple um, a medicine bottle to make a dip up to go around. So I have this going right here. Okay. You see that? And then we need handles. So our handles are going to go from the edge here down. So the shape is going to look like a big W when you're done. Okay. And just measure with your fingers. Use your hands. Um, I believe one of our art show people said their favorite tool was their hands. And use your hands. So now you see the big W we got going on here. I made a Everybody. lot of pictures for everyone. Okay. Later, Sam. Later. And so we're going to cut down. I'm cutting through both layers of the of the shirt. So both sides are getting cut at the same time. I'm going to cut my divot. My humpy bumpy. And then cut across. Alright, so again, save this. We're going to use it again in a minute. So, the basic part or shape of your of your bag is about done. Okay? Now, the only other thing you need to do is sew the bottom. Now, to sew the bottom, you need to trim off this bottom edge because you're not going to sew it. And you can either let it go ahead and be around or you can... I slid it so I could cut it even closer to the edge. I guess I could have cut a hole and do the same thing, but... I want this as close to the edge as possible. Now you can save this piece too. You can make something else into it. Now, some directions, if you look for um, tutorials on grocery sacks on the web, some have you sew it straight across at the bottom. And you could do that. You could make it go straight across just like that. But I like myself to make it look like the ones in the grocery store. Now, you would think when you're doing this, that, oh, I should have turned this inside out so my seam will be in the right spot. No, because your bag won't open correctly if you put that inside out. So what I do is I, you can kind of see that the edge here is the edge of my shirt. This is where the crease was in my shirt, okay? That's my edge. I'm folding this in, and I'm kind of lining it up with the edge of my handle so that this makes a straight piece right here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is fold this where the, the crease was right here in my shirt. That's going to be where that stays folded. And you can, and just for help, I'm going to put a pen right there so that 
One, it'll help y'all see it, but two, it'll help me keep from going all the way over. Okay, so here's here's where the center is. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Is I'm going to fold the same amount, this distance here and this distance here, are going to be equal distance. Okay? And I'm going to fold it back like this. So that it's like this. Okay? And I'm going to make it be nice and straight. I don't want it left like that. I want it to be all nice and straight. So I'm going to take a minute to fuss with it here. The neat thing about t-shirts is even if you don't finish their little edges, they kind of curl. And it curls over and and doesn't fray. It doesn't fray like a like a woven cotton or a linen would do. Okay, so there you go. I'll see. And then so here's the side and you can see it's all nice and straight. Okay. Compared to this side. Just kind of whacked out, looking kind of like a t-shirt. So let's go over here and do the same thing. And now that you've already folded that side, you can um, you can remind yourself, you can turn, fold this in half and kind of see how far this is going to go in to get an idea. Just for government work, I want to measure how long that was. And this will vary from from project to project. Sometimes this will be like for this one, I have it at two and three eighths. So a bigger shirt, that divot, that gusset that you're making, it's not a divot, it's a gusset, might be a little bigger. Um, or it might be a little smaller. So, depending on how deep you cut, did your pockets, or not your pockets, but your sleeves and stuff. Mine, mine's, mine's, um, small. Will's is the, Will's gonna laugh at me that I have a little one. Okay, so all I'm putting the pins on, guys, for is to help hold that together so I can run the stitch over it here in a minute. Does anybody have any questions? I'm making a grocery sack out of an old t-shirt. Now, I'm fixing to stitch this across the bottom. And the other thing, because this one is a little one, it's, it's a wee sack, I could go in and cut slits. And just like every couple, you know, what I would do is probably... Um, make them about two finger widths apart and probably have at least three or so through here. Okay. And then it could be like a vegetable bag that, you know, has like a, yes, a mesh style. Exactly, Dawn. And when you do that, then you pull it so that it creates those opened holes. All right. But this one, we want just a cute little bag. So 
I'm going to bring the sewing machine up. Say hello, sewing machine. Ah! Right now it looks like a tank top. But when we sew it, you can't wear it. And I'm going to sew two seams. And I'm top stitching. Um, I'm not turning anything under because remember I told you if you turn something under, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna do its thing. It's not gonna fold upright and be be a bag like. Okay, so we made one pass, and you don't have to turn it over, and actually we didn't wait one whole pass. Look, I didn't pin that, and so we have a hole in the bottom of our bag. Hang on. Let's, let's go back over it on the second pass, we'll get that for sure. So, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and I would only trim this edge here. Probably what I'll do off camera is go back and catch that stitch right there across the top of that. Um, I'm not going to sit here and waste your time right now and do that. But, um, You Easy squeezed piece. out 17 Little needles piece. from an old pin cushion like that one. What? So, but anyway, so here's your bag. And then as you use it, this will stretch and, and become more like the other one where the handles looked almost like strings. So. What do you think? And see, this way it opens and has room to grow on the sides. It's kind of like you have your little gussets there. It would not work that way if you did that inside out. So, so now we have another. And this would be actually what this would be really cute for, this size. Be cute for a little lunch sack to put, you know, take sack lunch in or something because it's little. So. I liked it because it would all fit on my desk so I could show y'all all at once. Unlike this giant shirt that I'm fixing to show you. So, I know. Great, huh? So, here's here's this. This is crafty number one. Crafty number one. Yay. Okay. So, let's put this aside. Are you ready for crafty number two? Because we are going to use the leftover bits for crafty number two. Okay. Crafty number two, you need nine little flowers. I bet you could, Fab, make anti-static bags with the smaller bits. We're not making those. We're making flowers. So I'm going to turn this sideways. And I'm going to use for your amusement. I'm going to make a quick template.
use my crafty scissors to cut this out. Sorry, it's hard for me to cut and talk at the same time, guys. I have to use my mouth for cutting. Okay, so funky little flower. And I need nine of these at least. And you can make a different shaped flower. Um, I just chose the shape because it looked fun. And I bet you could even do circles if you wanted to. If you had a die that cut this shape, you could use that. Do we have someone being inappropriate? Sam, when the cat makes that particular noise, that means leave me alone. Oh, okay. Thanks, Fab. Because I think Mom is my moderator, and I think she ran away for a while to work on supper. I didn't think to make anybody else a moderator. Because I normally, I normally get a good bunch of people. My normal crowd is very sweet and respectful, and I appreciate it. Either that or they're all scared of me because they know I'll bump you. Y'all are a good bunch of people, most days. Some days y'all can be rabble rousers. Okay, so there's one set. And you could keep cutting things out of this, all kinds of fun pieces. So, I mean, do with that as much as you can or want to. And I just like all the funness of this. Leave it alone. Go. It's the people in my house that I have to have problems with, apparently. So did everybody recuperate from uh, National Scrapbook Extravaganza Weekend? I'm so inspired, I want to... Uh, do some serious scrapbooking this weekend for Mother's Day. I have several projects planned that I would like to get accomplished. Everybody remember while you're scrapbooking, I'm doing a mini, I have a Make Mine a Mini challenge going on right now for mini scrapbook pages. Um, it says 5x5 five five or smaller, but you can do bigger if you did 
six by six or even eight by eight, I'd be okay with that. Just smaller than your regular standard eight and a half by eleven or twelve by twelve. And I've got quite I've got a couple of people interested in doing it with me this time and I'm excited. I hope we get a few more going. So tell your friends, that's what makes it fun. There are books out there, guys, that you can make all kinds of things with your leftovers. And um with your with your t-shirts and they have whole books devoted to it so feel free to to knock yourself out at your library pick one up I'm in no way shape or fashion going to do all the things you can do with leftover t-shirts but we'll do a few Yes, the mini scrapbook challenge is on my blog, Fab. Um, if you go to my blog on the landing page of my blog up at the top before my very first post, it'll say to go to the current challenge, click here, and it'll take you to the current challenge, which is challenge number four, make mine a mini. Are you going to tweak that for me, Fab? That would be awesome if you did. If you don't have a blog, you can put your picture into a like a photo bucket or a Picasso or something like that and add it. And if you still want to play and you don't have that, if you'll email it to me or post it on my Facebook wall, I'll help you get entered. I don't want people not having a blog to keep them from entering because I realize not everybody blogs and Just because I blog doesn't mean everybody blogs. It's right there at the very top. Yes, Amanda, exactly. Make mine a mini. Um, it's the words that are above that first post. It's not even on a tab. Okay. Okay. Am I expecting? I'm expecting my children to come home. That's what I'm expecting. Okay. I pre-cut a circle out of some felt. This is going to be my base. And what you need is to take four of these and fold them in quarters. And I know you're looking at me going, you just had me make a five-petal flower, and now you're telling me to fold it in quarters. Just trust me. Fold it in quarters. Okay. And these you're going to glue down on here. I really like this orange piece. That's pretty cool looking. Let's do this. Okay. So here is my four pieces like this. Okay. I'm going to glue those to this. I'm going to use ye old hot glue here. Come back, come back. <laughs> 
Sorry, the strings are sticking to me. Okay, so there we go. There's, there's those. They're glued down, right? I have her first injury, I think, Fab. Um, I, I just need to go fix it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's just Raven and I have been crazy busy with, uh, with life and forgot to go back and fix it, but I'll fix it. Yeah, thanks, Fab, for reminding me to do that. I will look at that this, this weekend and make sure it gets fixed. We will draw just before my show next Friday for the winner, 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 chicken dinner. Okay. So here it is. Okay, we're doing four again here. Okay. Fab, you could do, I was just saying, you could do up to like 8x8 eight eight and it would be okay. I, initially, I'd put 5x5, five five, but that's super mini. Maybe if it's it'll bitty like that, you could get two entries for it. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to glue this one on top. Okay. And I'm again, I'm just putting a little bit of glue in the center like I did before because right now I just want to hold it there because so I'll show you what we're going to do here in a minute. So these are crossing the lines that we created with the first four. So let me see if I can hold this up where you can see it. Okay, see here are the first four right here and this one is going over. So this one will go over like that. Okay. And this one will go over like that. And this is the last one that goes right here. Okay. So you see we're building this fluffy flower. Yes, I'm stacking the corners. And now it's stuck to my finger. Okay, stop. All right. And then I told you we only needed nine. So this last one, I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to kind of twirl it like this to make a little bud. See my bud? And this would be very cute all by itself, stuck to a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like get the green stuff and wrap it and stick it on a stem. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. This is going to go right there. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Hold that right there for just a minute. And hi, Bubba. Welcome home. Congratulations. We got a um, superior. Superior. We got a truth. I got a trophy. Cool. Mm -hmm. Second time in the entire NRH Tour competition that all the bands got a superior, and there were some orchestras there. Cool. Very cool. It was the high school that Daddy went to. Arlington High School. Yay! That's the high school I went to. Very they good. Got a, they got a superior. <laughs> that's that's the very tired face. That's not the long face. That's the I'm so tired. Can what is this? Slime. Slime. Okay. Um. The other one gets really really cold if you let it sit there by itself. Okay. First, I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. So right now, this is what you have. You have your center sticking up, kind of dorky like that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is start pulling these up and gluing them to the sides. Okay, does that make sense? 
I'm going to put like a little line right there. Like that. See, so I put a little line of glue. And I'm going to pull this up. And kind of hold it for just a second. Got to love hot glue. Really do. I'm going to do the same over here on this side. I'm going to give it a little streak of glue. And I'm going to pull it up. see it starts making your little flower puff up how cool is that okay sorry this just makes me very excited yeah I wish I had more <laughs> excuse me while I go cut my bag up so I can make more flowers like this right no I've got other um, I've got some other tie-dye shirts that I'm gonna do this with And then there we go. So so there you go. Fun little t-shirt flower. Now this you could glue to a headband or um, a scarf or whatever uh, because it's built on a piece of felt you could put a little strip of felt and stick a clippy through it to put it on your head for like a hair bow um, yeah you could put it on a bag I could put it on the bag that is right Molly I could put it on the bag so I love it I think this is very cute I'm going to play with it some more, get a little more glue here and there to kind of make it stand up and look a little fuller, I think. So, but anyway, I love how that looks. That's very cute. Makes a very cute little flower. We want to see it on the bag. Here's the bag. Let's see if we can put it right here. Little flower on the bag. Tee hee. Okay. I love it when things are that stinking cute. It's so very cute. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what you can do with this, and then I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay? There are several things you can do with this. This is yarn made out of t-shirt. Okay? And you can use it like Molly was doing the other night um, to make buttons. Let's see. Let's do a button. Need some more glue. So, I'm going to show you how to use it, and then I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay? And... Just gluing along the edge of my flower here. Or button. Whatever you want to call this. I think I've glued this down to my table now, so I should not move anymore. <laughs> Thank you. 
I know. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with old t-shirts, Fab. Figure out what you want to do with it and just get to town on it. They even had one, one had where you took and made underwear, like the, the long men's boxer briefs with them. Okay, so here you go. You could make a button thing. It could almost look like a ribbon rose. Let's see. I got too much light on it. Sorry, guys. Let's see. Let's see how it looks kind of like a. That could be interesting used on something. You could take your brown and instead of doing that, put your glue on the back and y'all know me and my, my sunflowers. Have your petals go around. Okay. I'm not going to go around because I want to leave enough to do stuff. All right. I'll show you. So, but you get the idea. Make your petals go all the way around, right? Or do you want, or would you like to see the petals go all the way around? No? Okay. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. Here it goes. Or it could look like, it could look like a bee. That's true. Like a fat little pea. <laughs> I do. I, I'm, my sunflowers right now are about a foot and a half tall. And um, they are awesome. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. By the bedside. Purple cup. Okay, so now this is small enough that I have a size I hook. Size I. Okay. And and it's round. It's almost round. It has a seam underneath it, Jen, where it's rolled over on itself. You see that? Okay. And you can crochet it. And you could use this to make coasters or dishcloths or placemats or trivets. Let's see. Let's make a simple one. So, and the width, I'll, I'll show you how wide I cut this, um, because I cut this like not even an inch, and, um, and that made this size that I can use this eye hook with, but the bigger you make it, obviously, the fatter your, your t-shirt yarn is going to be. Okay. Did I cut it in a circle cutter? No. I did not cut it in a circle cutter. Wait till you see what I did. Okay. So see it it crochets up. And it makes a nice thick thing too. Okay. See, it makes it nice and thick. Alright. I will show I will show you, Fab. I will show you. <laughs> so, okay. And yeah, of course it undoes. 
And the coolest thing about this is, I'm hurrying, Fab. Don't rush me. Is, you've seen all those necklaces and stuff that people are making. And they're doing, like, lots of loopies. Hello. So, you know, you can make a whole bunch of different ones. Then you could take, like, this charm that we made here. Put your jump ring on. Stick these on there. Or any other kind of blingity bling fun stuff. To do it with okay same with bracelets same with using this once you've got this made and do braiding with it and braid it into all kinds of hair thingies and bracelets and all that right so would you like to know how to make this Fab, you have to come back tomorrow. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, Fab, you're so bad. Okay. What I did is, I'll show you how I started with this one. Okay, first I took a t-shirt, and this is this is a sizable t-shirt, okay? It's this one. Um, might be an extra large. It can be any size, because it's not going to matter, okay? And you're going to look where... The the um, the underarms are. Come here. Put the sewing machine up. Sorry, I need a glass of water. Okay. You're going to where the underarms are is going to be where you're going to cut. So, I folded mine and I cut. Okay, does that make sense? Everybody, yes, say it again. Okay, figure out where the underarms are because, see, if you if you used up here, you're not going to be able to get a continuous length. Okay, you want to figure out where the underarm is, fold it there, and you're going to cut along that line. Okay, so that you have a giant tube. Okay, I have a tube. Here's one side of the tube. Here's the other side of the tube. Okay, everybody got a tube? Now, what you're going to do is, and you can do this in half if you want to, which is what I'm going to do just to make it easier for me. But you're going to cut it. I'm going to draw on a piece of paper so you understand. And that way you won't get confused with me folding in half. Okay. Here is your t-shirt. Sorry, we went fuzzy. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm fixing to do. Okay, let's pretend this is your t-shirt base. Okay. All right. These are the sides of your tube. Okay. Now, you're going to draw, and you can use a ruler, you're going to draw lines this way that go off this edge, but not all the way across. So you're going to have lines going this way. Sam, leave the cat alone. Get the cat out of the towel. She's not hot or cold. Okay. See how that. Alright. These on this side go off the edge. Now. Then. Have these go this way. Okay, so what's going to happen, okay, is you're going to, you're going to cut one side,
Then you'll turn and you'll cut the other side. And because it's fabric and not paper, you'll be able to pull it straight, okay? Be able to pull it straight. And as you pull, it will make a straight line. Yes, I cut the strip with scissors. You could use your rotary cutter. That's fine. This particular strip, I actually cut with my pinking shears. So it was pinked. No, it's not how you make plarn, Amanda. I'll have to show you how to make plarn another day. Okay? So, this one string that I was playing with, that was what happened when I just cut it straight across without making it go roundy roundy. And it was rather long. So, but we want to make it go roundy roundy because that would be more fun. Don't you think? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Night Fab. Glad you could see me. So. I'm going to, hey Will, do you know where your, um, Will, do you happen to know where your um, yardstick is? Okay, well never mind. I was thinking I would use a yardstick, but I guess I won't. Y'all are going to hear the cat scream in a minute and the child scream because the cat is going to box the child or bite her because she won't leave the cat alone. Just letting you know. Night, Calf. I'm glad you could come. Can I see my little baggie? Oh, that's cute, my little baggie. She likes her bag. Now, if you've used, if you made these flowers, guys, with a white t-shirt or a solid t-shirt and then you could use some mists or something to spray it to make it all colorful that would be cool too just something that popped into my head while I was sitting here stretching out some fabric okay I'm going to use a very scientific method here to uh, draw my lines I'm going to use this piece of cardboard and I'll give you a measurement for it. Um, it's about an inch wide. And that's about how wide I just free cut it earlier. Okay. And I am going to use my Sharpie so I can see it to cut. Okay. And... This very sophisticated tool here will enable you to, um, you know, accurately cut your one inch strips. So really, the strips are going to be like two inches apart where they are crossing over on the sides. But you'll have a one inch strip in the middle of it so that it, your strip, final strip will be um, one inch wide before you start pulling it. So everybody understand that? Do I need to show that again before I start cutting away? You got it? Okay. So what I'm going to do is not go that far on that one. 
And I'm going to cut just a couple of strips so you get the idea. I'm not going to cut the whole base of the shirt. Um, but you certainly could cut the whole base of the shirt just to make it nice and long pieces of, of yarn or string, whatever you're going to use your stuff for. And there's so many uses for this, so many. Somebody commented that um, our, our throwaway shirts were nicer than, than their throwaway shirts. Most of the time what happens is like, especially for my husband, um, and even for myself sometimes, is our shirts will shrink in length before they shrink anywhere else. And he particularly is a long person. And so if if it shrinks in that length, you know, you have a shirt that for whatever reason is wider than you are by like two or three, um, yeah, two or three sizes too wide, but not long enough. And so that's why our shirt might look um, in better condition because like this one I know is one of the ones that was just too short for him to, to wear. I deem some clothes not wearable out in public, and this was definitely one of those because it was in the not wearable out in public bin. So, all right, this one, this is where I'm going to stop this one just just to show you because I want you to, I want to show you one other thing before I finish tonight. And I'm choosing, well, I was choosing. Sam, did you take my pinking shears? Did you take my pinking shears? Okay, I'm just going to use regular scissors here, or regular fabric scissors. <sighs> did y'all see I got my red handle scissors back? They returned to me. And being precise on this is not necessary. If you have a big spot that you can work in and use your rotary cutter to cut and all that kind of stuff, that would definitely be a beneficial way to make nice straight lines, you know. Um, but it's not necessary. I'm, I'm using the space allotted in my in my camera zone, and and I'm doing just fine. And what I'm doing first is first cut, and this is where I lined up my um, my thing with, was that I'm cutting off this edge. And on this back side, I missed part of this edge, so I'm going to come on here. Because I would like it to be um, as similar and weight as possible because that will make it easier to crochet with or braid with. So can you see lots of possibilities for this stuff? I mean, you know, braiding bracelets, headbands, making necklaces, neat stringy necklaces. Making pom poms, because you know, for me, pom poms are very fun. Make clown hair with it. Okay, so I got the bottom cut. You understand? Is anybody listening anymore? Have I lost y'all? I guess.
my business for splash day. I packed up all my stuff in here. Packed up socks, panties, sandals, and a shirt. And pants. She has filled her bag. <laughs> for yeah. field day. I for, mean. Yeah. Wait. What about sunscreen? Yep, I'll need sunscreen. Okay. Bubba I has sunscreen. Well, Bubba has sunscreen. Well, okay. there's sunscreen in the closet. I wouldn't use it. Okay, so here we go. We're almost to the end of this row. This way again. Are y'all still there? Samantha. 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 Sunscreen. Listen to me. We need it this weekend, so if you pack it up, you're not going to be able to have it. Oh, I'm gonna bring it. I know, but you don't need to bring it. Remember, splash day, seven more sleeps away. Hello, lovely people. Are you still with me in the room? So did everybody go to the bathroom at the same time, or what? Where's my bag? Hmm. Where's my bag? It says we're recording. And we're live. Well, I hope y'all are there since nobody's talking. I don't know why I can't see you guys. Oh no. Where's this sunscreen? Where's Shh. my bag? Hush. I need my bag. We'll go find it. We'll find it. But... Hush. Okay. I don't know why it just like froze on my chat. But now I see you guys. Weird. You're watching, not typing? Okay. Did y'all have any questions? Because the last I saw was that y'all understood how I am. Um, how this is going to work in theory. Now, okay. So I'm going to stop doing that for a minute. Now, 
right now you see I have like all these loops okay I have a big thing of loops right so what we decide is which ones are no longer loops so this I'm gonna start here to make my beginning okay you ready Let's see if I can remember how this goes okay I'm gonna start there so we have it starts here loop sorry what I did Jen was I cut it to um, to where my strip keeps going so like here I'm gonna cut this at an angle so this keeps going and so when I get to here I'm going to if I cut straight across this will end because that's the end of it right so I'm going to cut where this piece keeps going down so here's here's this is going to go this way you see that and so this we're going to have to trim off on this side but if we did this right it'll all make a longer piece okay so here's here's this piece coming and so I want to want to keep going I'm gonna cut this one this way it's gonna be the end of my loop and then this will so this keeps going down this way so I have this one well I have these two small pieces that are are like the extra pieces okay that's all right but this piece now because I cut it so that it was at an angle to keep our loop going aroundy roundy roundy it's one big long piece okay now when we start pulling it will curl onto itself so if you've and this I'm gonna trim right here because I still have some of the seam on it and I don't want the seam on it so hang on just a second let me cut that off So when you start pulling, you just pull. Okay? If you pull too much, it will it will cut itself. Or it will it will tear. But it it's pretty strong. I, I'm using quite a bit of force. I'm zoomed out. Gone. Okay. So I'm using quite a bit of force and pulling. This would be an excellent job to hand to your children or your spouse and say, here go pull this and I've seen some people pull these and then twist them together to make a fatter cord with two colors and stuff but you just pull and so when you pull it makes it nice and and uh, into that that little yarn and it's pretty sturdy like I said you, I mean you can pull it too tight and it it break if you get too carried away and see this piece has that little extra hanging out I'm just gonna trim him and he'll fold right into my fold like that Ta -da! No, maybe they were in a survival situation, Molly, <laughs> and they needed rope.
but this is almost, I mean, it's it's not as, as sturdy, but it's almost as the width of, like, paracord. I mean, I bet you could, I bet you could make um, those survival bracelets with it. They just wouldn't be as strong, you know what I mean? So... prisoners cutting up their shirts to escape. Maybe. But I've seen, um, and then what people have done with this, I mean, and let's, I mean, just for giggles, make a little ball here. Okay. Now keep in mind, I only cut like maybe five inches of the shirt. Okay. maybe five inches. Teenagers trying to escape, you know, because of all the white t-shirts. That's a pretty big ball of, of stuff, don't you think? And that's just five inches. So that's crazy. That's just crazy. So there you go. And you could easily just, you know, merge those two strips together with a little bit of stitch and, you know, make your strip longer. So um, what am I going to do with this? I'm probably going to do um, either some weaving. Oh, that was another thing they did with this. They took. Um, like a piece of mesh and made rugs out of these. So these could be your rug loopies. Cool, huh? So lots of fun things you can do with this. I Still love this the best. Stuff. Okay. Okay. Get out of my way. I'm making one more thing. What? I see it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now I want to show you one more trick very quickly and then we'll be done. Okay. I want to get out one of these shirts. Okay. Like I said, growing up, we'll had tons of shirts that were, had stuff on them. This one's train hard, play hard. Yes. Any t-shirt material. Yes. You could do braided rugs, all kinds of cool stuff with these. I bet you could use cotton too, Molly. Uh, the one I cut up, let's see what it is. Yeah, the yellow one's 100% cotton. So, yeah. Okay. So, he has several of these shirts that he likes that, um, that I don't want to make it into a quilt, you know, because I, I want some of the cuter little shirts for a quilt, but he likes this one. He likes, it says, play hard, train hard. It's fun. It's enjoyable. So, what we're going to do with it. I'm not going to the beach. I'm going to Splash Day. Okay, thank you, Sam. They, I believe they saw that, um, you were all packed in your bag that I just barely finished. I'm just using this for a straight edge, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it so that I get as close to this neck as I can. Okay. And I'm going to cut it across. And this is a project that um, any kid can do. Sam could do this. This is super easy. Okay. Jillian definitely, definitely could do this. Okay. I'm going to start there. And I'm going to, and the reason I'm using this to line up, you will see very soon why I want this to be my lineup. For 
for that matter, with some assistance. I bet Puka could do it. All right, you ready? We're going to cut the bottom off. Now save this because, you know, you can make any number of necklaces of yarn. Cutest little flowers ever! Yeah, if he wanted to do it, he could do it. Did y'all need to see the flower again? I think the flower's freaking awesome. Imagine it done with um, using um, peeking shears. OMG. Be too cool. You're going to make a flower today. <laughs> I know. Everybody stop what you're doing. Everybody make a flower. And I'm cutting through both layers of the t-shirt. Well, I was cutting through both layers of the t-shirt. Oh, here we go. I'm cutting through both layers of the t-shirt. I know, with white t-shirts, go steal one of your husband's white undershirts and make a bunch of flowers and spray them with the mists. Either the memory maker's mess or, you know, the, the paint mess. Yeah. Look on your wall tomorrow. I will look, Molly. Okay. So, I've got that. Okay. Right now, I still have arms attached to it. I'm going to take those off. But I want it to be... I'm lining it up against the T and the P. Because that's... That'd be my thing. What I love about this is, like I said, it's getting harder and harder to give away t-shirts and blue jeans at our places. They want either, um, either nice clothes that people could use to interview with, um, or they want um, clothes that are or, you know, you know, button downs and, you know, not, not somebody's worn out kid's t-shirt, whatever. And when these, like if you had a stain or something, you could totally work around that, you know. Um, okay, so we have a square. All right, now I'm going to take this again and I'm going to measure. Raven, I didn't do too much uh, sewing, did I, dear? I hope not. I didn't want to lose Miss Raven tonight. Just a wee bit of sewing. Is Raven already gone? I can't see the rest of the chat. Oh, Raven had company. Okay. All right. Now, what this line is for, this is your cut two line. Okay. Now, I'm going to get you started on one side. And see, I, I went a little close to this side. This side, my cutting line is, is going to have issue, but we'll be okay. All right. I'm not going to start on that side because that side's going to be too hard. I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut strips. And I'm going to cut. I'm not cutting all the way um, across because... This piece is going to fall off. It's in the corner. Bye, Don. But I'm cutting about half inch strips, half inch wide or so. And you'll cut this all the way around like this. And it's nice, especially for fat fingers or um, not adept tires, to have these long pieces.
Yes, and now we're going to tie them. Bye, Bev. Thank you for coming. So now we're going to tie them. And we're going to tie them twice. And the reason you're going to tie them twice is because once we'll come in done. But twice will be nice and um, sturdy. And you're going to cut and tie all the way around. So I'm going to just tie this side so you can kind of see what it looks like. And pulling on your strips, you're going to get those fun little fringes like we just had with the t-shirt the yarn that we made. Yes, they have. And then, see, what you could do also is tie your blanket together like this, like you were talking about, the, the blankets that are already tied. You could tie your, um, your quilt squares together like this and have the little fringe in the middle of your quilt squares if you wanted. But this is not going to quilt. This is going to be something else. This is going to be a pillow. Because when you get all four sides done, you can stuff it with fiber fill and make the cutest little pillow. I don't know if Will knows where his is. Will made one with his eagle shirt one time. And these are great little travel pillows because they can go right behind your head right by your headrest, right in the lower of your back. These are perfect size pillows. I know. Hang with me, Molly. I'll show you how to make all kinds of stuff. Now, when I was researching this, the funniest thing, absolutely funniest thing I saw done with a t-shirt is get a, a giant t-shirt, like 3x or bigger. And you take some um, like the four inch square wire the, that you would make tomato cages out of and you make your round tomato cage about mm, at least two feet across. Sew the bottom of your t-shirt, cut the arms off, and then take that t-shirt and stretch it across the cylinder cage that you've made and plant tomatoes in it. It was hilarious. I laughed and laughed and laughed. Yes, definitely. Phil, you be making, you're going to be making little pillows, aren't you, Molly? I think what would be fun is to get up at the school, ask for all the athletic shirts that the kids, you know, outgrow or whatever, and for a fundraiser, make them into pillows or, or bags or whatever, and sell them. I know, the flower, the flower is the coolest thing, I will admit it next to the bag. I love the bag. The bag rocks. But the flower is so cool. I'm going to make some hair duties with the flowers. And see if you had a funky fiber um, dye, you wouldn't even have to hand cut them. Uh, it's a total of nine pieces, Molly. They're all the same shape nine pieces of flour and the bottom is four and then the second layer is four and then the top is that little one that you roll into a petal. So you have a base layer and I put my base layer on a round piece of felt. I'm glad you learned something tonight, Molly, that you wanted to run out and do right away. That's what's fun about recycle crafts, I think. Your fabric challenge? I know, Carrie. This is perfect. And this is a great craft. We've done this craft with our scouts um, because it's just super easy to do. 
and um, it's great for kids. Like I said, Sam could easily do this. She's six. Um, I know she could do it at four or five because, I mean, it's just tying knots, and, and she's a pro at tying knots, so. But, and see, you could do this also. Like I said, I'll open it so you can see how, how it sticks together. But um, on the corners, I leave this corner piece because what I'll do is I will cut this way and have the strips. And this actual corner piece will end up going away. Okay? It'll go away. But so, like, that's the front part. And you can see the play hard on there. Um, and so when you fill it full of fiber stuff, it'll puff out. It'll be super cool. But, like I said, you could use it to tie together and make quilt pieces. So this square could tie to another square over here, over here. And then you have these fun little fringes. So you could do that. So what do you think, guys? Two thumbs up. Awesome. Cool. This, to me, is a lot of fun because, like I said, I've seen tons of people making bracelets with these where they've taken several and then taken a small piece of, of this and sewn it on here to make a nice little closure for it, you know, so some little buttons or little jewels and then wear it as a bracelet, you know, tons of ideas with this. This in and of itself is golden to me, not just the color, but I mean, you can braid it, you can weave it, so, so many cool things to do with t-shirt yarn. Might just make balls of it and sell it, right? <laughs> yeah. Think of all the t-shirts we're saving in the world. Um, Molly, if you want, I'll, um, if I can find it, my flower, I was going to say I'll scan it. And throw it up on my wall so you can have it. Oh, here. If you want this shape or you can make your own shape. Um, whatever moves you. Okay. I'll scan this and put it on um, put it on my Leslie Ray wall. And uh, I'll make a link to this, to this recording and stick it on the blog over the weekend, okay? And uh, take some better pictures of the flowers. Because... <sighs> This is my favorite thing. You can make a bracelet with flowers. Wouldn't that be fun? Yay. So. I think. If. Okay. If I. When I put my link. My link to the video up. With pattern for this for you. And the pattern for the little bag. Which you know. Kind of reminding you where you need to make your cuts. If I put a link up, would y'all share your projects with me and show me what you've done? Cool. I would love that because, you know, it would be so neat to see how you took it and interpreted it and made your own thing or whatever. I would love that. I think we should do that. I'll fix that. You've already got your quick cut and plugged again. <laughs> now, but do you have little circles to put them on. Yes, good. <laughs> Molly, I'm tickled that you're that inspired and excited. I will show you if you would like to see some stuff I have been making lately. Would you like to see? Would you like to see some of my cards that I've made lately? Night, Amanda. This is uh, using a Viva Las Vegas stamp. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Hey, Raven. It's called Quilting with a Friend. We'll keep you in stitches. Uh, let's see. Friendships are sewn one stitch at a time. This, you see how this is curly like this, guys? This is um, hem tape. Just plain old hem tape, like you buy in the notions area. And when you heat it with a heat gun, 
if you keep heating it, it melts because it's polyester. And so it melts and it curls up like that. Okay. Um, this one, you are so special. Um, and then my festive Friday card that's up there right now. Santa love. So that's some of what I've been making lately. Which one? You've got a question on this one? Go ahead. What is it, Molly? Go ahead. What's the question about Santa? What did I use for the white? Um, all of Santa is colored with Craypaws. These are Craypaws. And I stamped him. I'll bring him up closer. I stamped him on the craft with um, black archival memories ink. And then, no, this one's a little bit different. This, um, I did stamp one and I've been felting him. I'm not quite done felting him. This one is colored, but it's the same Santa. And what I used to color his head was the white. And then I used the white here and I used paper stumps and did the curve of his beard. I mean, all the black lines you see are there. I just use the curve because this is like a thick oil crayon to, to make it really good. And then um, I did the, his skin has got the color of skin. His lip is pink. His eyes are blue. And then you see the shine there. I lacquered his glasses. And that's what really makes him pop. So, and then this was black and I colored with the red cray pot over it. Yes, the felting is almost done. I've just got to create his glasses. And um, I, have a, I have a couple of projects I want to finish this weekend. And then I want to get his glasses done and get him posted because he's really cool looking. And I think he's going to be like an ornament for my tree. So, but cray paws, these are awesome. If you haven't played with cray paws, um, they're by the Sakura of America, not Sakura Hobby Crafts, but Sakura of America. And they're just like, um, really yummy oil crayons. So. You're falling asleep. Okay, Jen. Really, actually, I'm finished. Um, let me show you some. I've been reworking some of my slides. Um, I'm hoping. Thanks, Jen. I'm hoping next week um, our final announcement about our fall stream. We're going to do another live event um, in the fall in October, and I hope we'll be having have all of our stuff ready for that. But don't forget that Amanda, Fab, and Dawn, and myself uh, do the Odd Show daily. Um, we have daily shows, a weekly reboot. Throughout the month of May, the reboot is going to be on Wednesdays, just simply because of baseball and scouts and all the end of school stuff. Um, the Odd Show Live blog spot and Link Two Rooms are there. And um, if you have one of those things that scan the QR codes, if you scan that, there's links to all of our stuff right there. It's so super cool, super easy. Um, don't forget, Leslie Ray's Crafty Gig is every second and fourth Friday of the month, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, we have one more Crafty Gig this month, and then we will have a one-year anniversary extravaganza because it's been a year since the Crafty Gig has been streaming. I'm very excited and very proud and so happy that y'all have been a part of that with me. Uh, for all things Leslie Ray, please scan my QR code and you'll find links to all kinds of stuff. And then don't forget, we have a Scrappy Challenge going on. This month's Scrappy Challenge is to make it a mini. Make a mini album, a mini scrapbook page, and link it up to my blog. There's a link right on my blog. And, um, and do that. And then...
my show is heavily supported by my mommy at CutAndPasteMemories.com. Tonight we really didn't use a whole lot of stuff except for the lovely Tim Holtz scissors, which you can get through mommy's store. Um, but she has lots of fun scrappy stuff and crafty stuff. And if you have an idea and need some special orders, please, please, please call her or email her. She will be glad to help you. So, without further ado, I thank you all for coming. I had a very good time. I wish everybody a wonderful Mother's Day. Um, even if you are not one, you have one. Um, so remember to celebrate and, and thank her for being a part of your life. So I will talk to you all later. Have a great weekend. Um, and thanks for stopping by and spending your Friday night with me. Good night.